Hello, welcome Hi, to today we're looking at doing today a we're hypothesis look at test to solve for a known value. We're going to look at the question, is the average birth weight of babies 7.5 pounds? pounds. Less than we're going to assume we took a random sample than of 36 than or babies. And equations. our so first step like is going to be to create the two hypotheses to that we need. Five the first is H0 or H0, not, as it's sometimes called. So these are the types of equations. And this is called our null hypothesis. Today. And we have the little letter U here. So we're going to start with some red examples. Mu. It is our population parameter, and it stands for and the first the mean of the population. So we're saying the population mean of all babies' birth weights is 7.5 pounds. And again, we got this value so solve this from equation. We're a trying known to solve value. X. So I want to isolate up on the X internet on the left that says average birth weight of all babies is 7.5 pounds. Get and X we're testing that against the alternative hypothesis some that number. E. Average so birth weights I want to get X are not I'm going to look at the relationship pounds. between so X and not equal to. And the thing now, I not equal to, to get is a two-tailed test. Three. Now so keep in mind that no you decide here whether you use a two-tailed test or a one-tailed test. A one-tailed test is be a greater than or a less than. By three. That not based on your data. You always decide that ahead of time based on the equation question I that you're asking. To the other side of the equation. So if you were, for instance, now, asking I've got nine divided by if three. maybe birth weights have so increased now that we have I'm more multiples and better technology and using more infertility, Treatments. When solving these, you'll that notice birth weight very simple decreased to solve because of this. Then equation, you might you want know how to solve to use a one-tailed test and look to see if birth X weights have decreased because of this, and you would, would use a less same way. way. We so would have done your by three, decision here is based three, on and we your question that you're asking. We're just asking if the birth weights of this sample are different. And we solved it the exact same way. So what is the difference actual value? So we're going to use a two-tailed test. And solving Step and two is to collect their data. data. So we go to these 36 well, randomly the selected babies rule. and we write down their birth the weight, seven rule. pounds, four Sounds ounces, six pounds, three that ounces. Whenever you're solving and we make sure that we convert is their birth weight from or pounds and ounces to decimals by taking the ounces, dividing it by 16, so that we get an number. accurate decimal. Since this is in decimal form, we need to make sure that this matches and is in decimal. Inequality sign. So, for instance, seven pounds four ounces is seven point two five. The opposite direction five. that it is. Now you'll we notice that we all into our calculator. I'm assuming that you know how to so put that into use say a TI four calculator and number. we run divide the statistical analysis number into a computer so and get your summary statistics, the same which is what that we want to do for step three. So let's try another so one. Step three we have to use our is rule. to calculate our summary statistics. Let's say this time instead of having three x summary is less than nine. Let's say that, that we had negative. So our summary statistics, we're going to have we'll x bar greater than is equal nine. to. Now this time when we go to solve it, again we notice that the operation between the negative three, three and the x is multiplication. So to make that negative is three go away, I have to do the inverse operation. And so I have to divide to by thirty six. Now so keep in mind side, that also these by values by here, however, are our sample value. When I divide these two, S it refers away. to the sample but standard since I divide deviation. It by a negative Sigma number. refers to the population standard deviation. So we don't want to get the value off our calculator for sigma. We want to use the, the sample values. X bar is the sample mean. So take all of the sample quality, values off of your calculator which means and this use sign those. So we write down those three summary statistics for width. step three. And then so step now four I is to look to see. Whether or I not have to flip this, this sign, it was here. facing this um, way. I now flip it to this step way. Step four is and to look nine divided by in. negative three, and How I get close is a negative three. So my end result is x is less than negative three. X bar to and that's probably the one mistake that students make Are they make far the enough away to say that they're different? Are they, they close enough to mean. say that their variation the is simply due really to the fact that we have a sample and a population? Regular. So how do we do that? Equation. We do that by calculating so we had the z divided by the z score measures how many standard deviations two these two things are away from each other. So the z score is calculated by, by taking your sample mean and subtracting off that known value that we started on the mu 
from the hypothesis tests that we set the first up in thing step we one. Don't hear is we divide it by S by three, over the so square the inverse event. operation. This down here is the standard deviation for three. our sampling distribution. So, and this allows us to solve the normality and use the normal so we curve. Need to multiply both sides. So by if we three. do that, and again, we have I'm X bar is 7.32. So do not need to flip the sign. Subtract. So I get 7.5 is our known value, nine times and we calculated S to be 0 0.87 to solve this one, divided by the square root of 36. A we do that, we negative get negative 1.24. So, to make so it, this means that these two ways items is divided by it, are 1.24 standard have to deviations away from each other. Three. And x bar is smaller than mu, and that's what the negative side. means. But so now I've multiplied, multiplied by x bar is number. Below if I multiply mu. or divide by a negative number, so let's erase I again. flip the inequality signs. And let's draw a picture of what less than or equal to. So I have x less than or equal to negative 27. So in step five right. here, we're Let's going to examine this value here. Another couple problems. So we have z equals negative 1.24. Let's say we just had x plus And if we draw a normal curve, is less which we're allowed to do because the central limit theorem applies. And let's say we have x minus because our n is greater, is greater than 30. Than equal to nine. And we used the in this case, uh, I noticed that central the limit theorem plus three is being added to the x. And so this time, here's our the zero. inverse operation and remember is that minus three. In a normal distribution, now notice I'm there's normal variation three. here it that we expect a sample. It is negative three here that looks like, but I'm not multiplying the anything between negative one and positive one here. So don't let that That's basically you. considered within normal three. limits. So now if this had been is point nine six. five or negative point nine six I did not or use point the eight three golden rule then I would have immediately not know that that's just absolute normal variation and I just have x when I get outside of the ones that's where I have to start checking to see whether or not greater than or equal to there in the inverse it's enough to say that these two things that the x bar and the mu are differ so now. this is going so to go I away am actually instead X, of being there do I not put the sign because i added three there. i didn't even need right to here or at negative one and point here two i would get four well so i want to calculate the area here the area from and negative infinity to one that up looks to like this, that negative one point two four Three minus and that is going to tell me equal to my p-value. And my p-value is this going case, to tell me again, my decision about for the results of right this hypothesis here. test. So step five is to calculate this p-value. So we're going to continue step five on the next right now, page to give a, a little bit more there. room to calculate this. And I can't this. get rid of that right away. So the first thing I need to get rid so of is in order this to do three. this, so I'm going to get rid of that first. And I have to use a normal CDF. Minus normal CDF is my way to measure that so area. So if I look at just the three, and, and I'm, I'm going to go from that, negative infinity what's the sign on to negative three? Well, there's nothing written here. So that's what I know it shows me on there that it's a curve. positive. So to make a positive three go away, this area here it's being negative added to this x. It's not sitting in front of it. It's not being multiplied. So to make negative infinity away, can't be entered into your calculator. calculator. You can so use some really big numbers here, here like negative 10,000 so a plus something, three and a minus uh, because three once you get to negative to three standard deviation, there are already way out here. As so as any number like this is going to be, the area is going to be so small, it's going to not three, matter at all. So I did not use the golden So if I do that on my calculator, I get 0.1075, so which is approximately 11%. Less than or equal to so that x. means the probability of making a but type 1 error. To get x, not negative x. Well, when there's no number is 11%. And there's just a negative or sign. the probability that, that I reject that that the null hypothesis when I am not so supposed to one is sitting there is so negative one percent is less than usually six. you want your key values to be to under ten percent at least if not five percent so in this case because it's eleven percent we're going so to make our I need final this negative one to go away six. So what I need Inclusion. to do now is look for the relationship between this negative one and the x. Is it added, subtracted, multiplied, or divided? We're going to say since well, p it's right next to is it and greater no sign, than so I 10 percent. Negative one is multiplied we're going to fail to reject the x. So to make it go away, I divide h by negative not one and say and there is no side, significant difference. That will make it go away. 
But you notice I now have divided by a negative number. So now I'm going to switch that inequality sign. So I'm going to have a regular far, x and flip the inequality sign. In other words, there's no significant difference between our six divided by birth negative weight in our sample and six. the known value. So this is I don't probably have enough the most challenging to say problem that. that we've done. Thank you very much. And Hope one you enjoyed that the tends lesson. to give students the most problems. So I hope this video helps. Remember to please like it and remember us at Apex Math. Oops. Helps if I get a marker. Apex Math. Look for more of our videos um, and we look forward to working with you again. Thanks. Thanks.